In this video, we're going to take a look at conditional relative frequencies. Conditional relative frequencies tie into two-way tables, and to come up with them, first of all, we created a two-way table using the number values, and I've got a video that you can watch about that. I also have a video that you can use to watch to learn about joint relative frequencies and marginal relative frequencies. So you can take a look at those. That's how we came up with this table right up here. Now we're going to do take this table and go to the next level and we're going to create m conditional relative frequencies. To get the conditional relative frequencies what we're going to do is we're going to take each joint relative frequency. Remember we find the joint relative frequencies inside the table here. So it's these right in the, the middle part. They're not on the edge of our table. We're going to divide that joint relative frequency by the marginal relative frequency. The marginal relative frequency. Now, you say, wait a minute, how do I know what one to divide by? Because they're everywhere, okay? These are all marginal relative frequencies. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick either the row total or the column total to work with. And the problem, if you're doing this in a math class, will typically tell you to do the row totals or the column totals. I'm going to do both just to show you the difference and how we can tell what's what as we do this. Okay, So we either go by the row total or by the column total. Column total. Okay. So, for this one over here, let's go by the row total. So, when we're going to do these, and I'm just going to jot that underneath here so that we keep that straight, and then this is going to be by the column. we're going to take by the row total. I want you to notice how these uh, tables, these empty tables I have down here are laid out. Notice what they're missing. They're missing that total, both the row and the column. That's because we're going to be dividing by that total. So it, it would just be one all the time, which wouldn't be very interesting. And so we don't need that. We don't have that in our uh, situation here. So what we're going to do is for this first one, we're going to take this number right here and we're going to divide it by, we're doing the row total, so it's going to be divided by this. Okay, so we have 0.733 divided by 0.833 and that's going to give us point oof, it's getting kind of tiny here 0 0.880 okay then the next one we take again this number divided by that number so 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.833 and that gives us 0 0.120 and then finally, this one is just zero, so zero divided by anything is just zero. So 0.833, that's just going to be zero. Now, I'm sorry if my handwriting is kind of crummy today. I will, I'll get you a nicer version of this in, in the next slide here. Okay, so then for the second row here, we're going to take this number and divide by that row total. So we're going to take 0 and divide it by the 0.167. So 0 divided by 0.167 is of course just 0. Then we're going to take 0 0.133 divide that by again the row total. So 0.67 and that's going to be equal to 0.76 or excuse me 0.796 ok 
Okay, and then finally we take this number divided by that one right there. So we have 0, 033 3, divided by again everything here by that same number and we end up with 0.198. Okay, so that's by row totals. You might say, well, it's just a bunch of random numbers. Why, why do we care? We'll come back to that. We're going to do the column totals next, and then we'll compare. Okay, so for our columns, it's going to work very similarly, except we're going to use the totals down on the bottom here. So for this one, we have 0.733 divided by the total there, 0.733 which is just 1. This one, 0 divided by that. Again, I'm writing this out. We could just maybe do this in our head, but just to be clear where these are all coming from, that's 0. Then the next one, we've got this number right here divided by that column total. So 0 0.1 divided by 0.233. That's going to give us 0.4. 429 and then right here take that number divided by point, point 0.233 again so 133 divided by point 0.233 and that gives us point 0.571 finally another easy one here that's 0 divided by anything is just 0 and then that number divided by itself is just one. Now, what do these things mean? As we look at this, remembering what we were going by, so for this one with the row, these are the things that we're kind of breaking things up by. And so what this means is that of the grass fields, 88% of them are in open air stadiums and 12 percent of them are in retractable stadiums and zero are in fixed roof stadiums which makes sense hard to grow grass under a, a dome then this one artificial turf zero or zero percent of the open air stadiums have artificial turf excuse me i should go the other way of the artificial turf are in the open air stadiums then this one, in the retractable stadiums, 79.6% of the artificial turf, so it's of this number right over here. Let me get that out of there. So of this are these things. And then 19.8% are of the artificial turf is in the fixed stadium. When we look at the columns, then we're going the other way. So this is of this stuff. So in the open air, 100% of the open stadiums have grass fields. 100%. That didn't always. Uh, that wasn't always the case. Interestingly enough, of the retractable stadiums, 42.9% have grass fields and 57.1% have artificial turf. And then finally, in the fixed roof, the dome, 0% have grass and 100% have artificial turf. So let me get you a, a nice version of that that we can look at and see a little bit more clearly how those things worked out. Okay, so again, here we have the by row with the, the types. Remember, this is the of over here so of the grass fields 88% um, are in open air stadiums and 12% are retractable roof and then of the artificial turf stadiums we've got this and then if we go by column we're talking about of this thing of the open of the retractable of the fixed Lots of great stuff here. So interesting. Uh, so many interesting things that we can come up with. 
as we look at uh, these conditional relative frequencies. We'll flip back here for just one second. Remember, to come up with conditional relative frequencies, what we do is we take each of the joint relative frequencies, which are the numbers inside here, and we divide by either a column total or a row total, depending on what you're asked to do. Remember that that column or row is what the of thing is going to be then. So of the grass uh, fields or of the artificial turf, those are these. And then on this one, when we go by column, it's of the open air, of the retractable, of the fixed. Great stuff. Awesome stuff. I hope uh, this was helpful in your study of math. And uh, you can do it. Keep after it. Have a good one.